For many months, the great plant of the Ford Motor Company at River Rouge, Michigan, has been inactive. But meanwhile, the brain of Henry Ford has been at work with this result, the new Ford V8. There have been exhaustive laboratory tests. Engineers have labored over every part of the car. Just as important are the road tests such as these, for after the builder has finished his task, then the practical manufacturer insists that the car shall prove what it can do, and there isn't a doubt that this car can do everything that the most optimistic can claim for it. At last, Henry Ford is satisfied, and there is nobody more difficult to convince than the head of this immense enterprise. He stamps car number one, for he finds it good. Just see for yourself what happens when the wheels start to turn again at the Ford plant. Their faith renewed in the future of America, an army of happy men goes to work to create this eight-cylinder motor car. Not only is this V8 capable of turning up speeds of 75 miles an hour, but the old Ford demand for fast quantity and quality production is met on the assembly line where every worker does his allotted task with swift and sure fingers, and the parts seem almost magically to march into position. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the new Ford V8. Observe its streamlined hood, its V-shaped radiator, its thrilling lines that suggest performance and luxury. No wonder Henry Ford and Edsel Ford, his son, observe their handiwork with approval. And there's the new Ford Victoria. And here's the convertible coupe. Next, we have the Phaeton. And the two-door sedan. There's the Roadster. And last, the four-door sedan.